Hello everybody and welcome back to my vlog, to my channel. Sorry it's been a little bit of time. I've been having some uh, health issues and uh, I just not got around to doing anything. But here we are, we got a uh, nice little amp board kit here. A quick little show of this just to show you. It's not a very big kit at all. It does claim to give 100 watts per channel. Uh, this is based on the um, TDA you see the TDA 7294. I bought the one, and I'll show you in a minute. I bought the one without the TDA uh, 7274s. The reason being on this is this is the second one of these I bought, and the first ones, um, well, the, the actual things themselves, the uh, I don't think they were correct. These I see. Um, so I bought two from Farnell. So these are genuine. TDA 72, 74s, 94s, and so hopefully we're going to get a better, a better output from these, or a, a better, a better, um, you know, result as a kit. So yeah, these are uh, these actually cost around about uh, well, just under ten pounds each when you buy them from a distribution. Now it could be because far now is probably not the cheapest on some stuff, but to be honest with you, by the time I've gone looking through everything. Um, you know, I realised that, uh, what on earth's going on here? Alright, I've got some cut-off jobbies. Alright, so we got the those there, that's all well and good, lovely. So yeah, nice, uh, looks like it's going to be a pretty simple kit to build. Like I said, I've done one already, but um, it sort of failed on these. Um, so with all of them, put the smallest parts first, of course, build up to the bigger. As you're putting things on there to make your life easy. And we'll have just a quick look at the screen, just to see... Uh, what it looks like on the actual advert. So here we go. If I just click that to there, click that to there. This is the one I bought. Look, DIY kit, and it doesn't have any TDA seventy two ninety four. So it's eleven pound, ten pence, probably about you know thirteen bucks something like that. And um, yeah, I'm actually going to just read off from. I'll tell you for why because here, you see the writing there. Um, I find that difficult to read. It's a bit funny for my eyes, so I'm just going to go on to this one that I've got pre-set up here. Um, I do like these coils, but I always get a thing with the, the young with the inductors like that. Different colour capacitors there, makes no difference really, I don't suppose. And so it says here, oh, let's go back to there, there we go. It says here, the view more. TDA7294 amplifier board. Um, these DMOS aren't they? DMOS uh, 100 watts times 2 speaker load 4 to 8 ohms and you can put in plus minus 24 volts up to plus minus 40 volts input impedance 22k you don't normally get to see that and it has a circuit here for it which again uh, you don't often get to see particularly not the correct circuits I've not been over it to make sure it's exactly the the, the right thing but we can have a look this is uh, 5 micro henry there and we can just take a quick peek it says 5 micro henry there and we can if we take a quick, quick peek uh, we might have to yeah we're gonna have to um we're gonna have to uh do a little bit of work on this and sand get rid of this sand these away so you're gonna make sure you do that before you put these things in and probably put them to the same length as well Otherwise, you can have one sticking all the way out and one only just sticking in. You might not sand in the right place. So, um, yeah, see, so that's going to have to be done. It's going to have to be sanded down. And we'll just check. I'm, rather than me do it now, what I'll do is as once I've done the sanding and bits and pieces, I'll uh, just do a quick check and we'll see if it's 5 micro Henry. Just to, just to see. It says it's 5 micro Henry. We'll have a look. So it is. Uh, anything else on here? 170 microfarads, 50 volts, that's all we got. And yeah, so this is, and I've, from what I understand, is you shouldn't get any speaker pop or anything like this because it's something to do with the way these things are set up. You don't get any speaker pop, on off noises, let's call it. Um, yeah, all right, so without further ado, let's, uh, let's go on and build it up. Okay, so we've got this board all built up. I've uh, got the genuine chips on there, and it's all wired up, uh, as you can see. And we are going to switch 
over to the uh, screen in the moment. Just a quick look at what we got here. So we're inputting 40 volts um, on one channel. I'm going to just show you how I set this up so you can see that. Uh, we've got 40 volts uh, positive and we got 40 volts negative. And that's how that is coming through these cables onto this. So now we're going to take a little peek at the screen. So here we are. This is the frequency response. I've already done it. I'll just uh, I'll hit that again so you can see for yourselves. There's no real difference on there. There you go. It's not really showing anything to be showing a difference. So that's pretty good uh, for what this is. Here's our 20 hertz. Anything below, I'm not really going to hear. So we're at uh, 0.3 dB, 0.33 dB. Third of a dB, let's say, down. Nothing too much to worry about there at 20 hertz. At 30, the lowest pair of speakers I got, 0 0.08. And uh, around about 46 is what I'm actually using in the lounge now because um, I brought in my uh, Q Acoustics 3030Is, which sound absolutely fantastic. To, and to be honest with you, I think they sound better in the monitor audios and uh, you know, fraction of the size. And if you're wondering which ones I mean, I mean these ones here. A great little speaker. Sound absolutely great. So let's have a look at the uh, SPA and Spectrum Analyzer. Just kick that off. This is actually at full blast, I think, already. Uh, what we'll do actually is because I think it's worth just taking that down to zero, hitting that. Yeah, I thought it might do that. All right, so this is uh, power on. Um, what we got in there, which doesn't look too bad, really. Let's start taking this up. Okay, 19 dB. 10 uh, dBFS, um, 5, 4.9, still turning that up pretty loud, look, uh, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, it's nice. Uh, we're on 3.7, 3.1. Oh, well, that's a. Uh... Now, this could be because it's at maximum voltage. I wouldn't have it going at maximum voltage. I'll tell you for why, because I played around with this. And I found that it wasn't that happy at maximum voltage. Actually, it's 4.9, 4.3, bang, 5% THD. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you that all I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it down a couple of volts now. What's a nice easy voltage for people to use? Because this is on, I'm just going to take it down at a time on both sides. All right, 18. Uh, so they're both on 19. Take this down to 18 volts per side, and we're just going to take a peek back at that screen again. And I'm going to show you that if you're not pulling in that full voltage, it's actually better. So here we have 5, 5, 4, 2, we're still on uh, 0 0.02 dB first, and even at 2, we're overdriving it now, uh, 3.1C. So at that voltage, so that's 18 volts. Uh, well, it's not actually, it's 36 aside, isn't it? So we've got 36 positive, 36 negative, and a zero. Uh, we got 0 0.037 at 3.1 dBFS. So running it at the full 40 volts uh, here, it seems to have an issue. And it's nothing to do with not having enough current. It's got plenty of current. And um, to be able to provide to it, it is basically the, the fact that it doesn't like being run at that, that, that full um, at that full voltage all right I'm going to turn that down again and I'm just going to turn this down again because this other thing what's what's a nice easy transformer to get hold of uh 25 we got something we can use as a calculator like I wonder if this thing's got a calc in it yeah, of course it has it so, so on the screen let's have a look at the calculator up all right, so we're going to go, let's say we've got a 25 volt um, transformer and we're going to times that by 
1.414. So we that's a 25 volt AC. Now that doing this is converting it to DC output. So that would give us 35 volts. Okay, so for that then, 35 volts aside, uh, we're going to want, uh, my maths isn't as good as what I'd like at this stage, embarrassing 15, 16, 17 and a half, so around about 18 volts, yeah, so so what, what we're giving it, so let's say, uh, what are what other transformers are real easy to get old, 18 volt transformers, um, so for an 18 volt transformer, uh, we are going to go times 1.5. 414. Many of you are not going to want to be bothered with this, but those out there that might be thinking of oh, what transformer should I use in. So now we've got 25 volts aside. So half of 25 is uh, is uh, 12 and a half, right? So over here I'm going to turn this down to 12 and a half because I'm going to do it quickly. I'm going to actually turn the, the power off to these now. I'm um, going to go down to 12.5. That one and on this one we're going to do the same thing 12.4 I could just type that in it's just as easy to type it in on this thing it's not a little I do so now we're going to have uh, 25 volts per side round the same as what we're going to get from our transformer okay and it uses a bit more current when the voltage is lower if you've noticed can you can you notice that Bit more current when the voltage is lower, but let's see what uh what we're doing here. Now I'll just turn that up, get it up to about there. So we're on 8.4, uh, 5.5, we're on uh, 0 0.02, 3 0.7, 0 0.6. Oh, look at that! Look, so yeah, we want more, we want more voltage than that. So I'd say, I'd say that uh. Yeah, where do we get to the calculator? Um, did we get to see a history thing here? Yeah, so we had here so 25 volts because that's around about the 18 uh, aside because that 30, 35 is about 36 volts, isn't it? Uh, so a 25 volt transformer seems like it's gonna work better on that. So you want a 25 0 25. Okay, well, so uh put that back because it's quite a big jump and I can't bother to do it in a little bit so I'm going to go back here just to just to share that what I'm talking about so um, back to the 18 yeah because we're talking um, not the 25 sorry we're talking 35 volts uh, but 36 volts we got two lots of 18s 36 right Maybe I've got that wrong. I'm going to check it in a second. <laughs> yeah, that back there, that's 19. But let's just do a quick little check on here. Uh, so we're going to say uh, uh, 18 times 2 equals 36 volts. Yeah, great. So that's about as close as we want it. So with that 25 volt AC transformer, I'm just checking these are the correct uses less current as you can see when it's the higher voltage let's get rid of that and we can just go back to this again just to show that it wasn't a fluke or anything minus 15 um, minus 7 four, 3 3 1 so we got there look let's just take the pressure off there uh, we get a uh, 0 0.03, which is perfectly acceptable. Perfectly acceptable for such a little tiny um, amplifier there. What I should do now is set up with the other stuff and do the uh, do the power test and such. And I think we will do that. But we're going to do it at this voltage where we get a good output at maximum voltage. We don't distort by going too high or too low on the voltage. Um, we're in the range of an easy transformer to get hold of. All right, I'll come back with that. Let me just show you this. So, just a couple of made-up cables. This uses both the inputs, two scope inputs, um, as a differential, and it's also got a voltage divider. 
So if I put 50 volts in, we get 25 volts going, or 50 volts from the amplifier, I get 25 volts, which is the maximum going into this. Um, and so, yeah, so that's that's the scope that there, and then you can see there's just another cable that's been made up. So you go to the input, which is that blue terminal there, uh, the input wires. All right, so it's exactly the same setup, but just a different connector. Um, we're gonna use the same uh, voltage, so. Once we're drawing the same amount of current, now we're just going to go into the audio analysis software. Okay, um, we are going to check and double check to make sure we don't overload this thing. Now, is it worth me looking through this like this? Uh, in some respects, I suppose it is, but you're not. It's, we're not going to see as lower total harmonic distortion as what we saw uh, with Arta because. The noise floor on this um, diligent scope here isn't as low as the noise floor on my computer setup with the sound card and that. But just for the sake, of it, we can take a peek and uh, I just see what the output is on this. So we'll just do um, 50 steps, total harmonic distortion and noise, uh, 0.3 volts RMS going in. So that's, uh, Giving it some, giving it a bit of welly, and we'll just run that. It's a quick peek. Okay, quite interesting. Here's down on the lower frequency areas. This is uh, 26. So we got our frequency up here, and we got our percentage here. Yeah, there's the frequency. Wherever I put this, it's what shows up there, and there's the percentage here. So this is including the noise. So we're at 26.5 hertz there, and we're at 0.3. And if we go to here, which is 35 hertz, we're at 0 0.30. Go here, 0 0.2. 100 hertz is a 0.18. And we get around about that 1K where we were measuring it. We got uh, 0.09, and the reason why it's high on here with the noise is because of the noise level of this actual device. If you can see here, it says 105 dB, which is, let's say, the middle area of our, our noise level, um, because that's as low as it can go. And of course, we were another 15 dB lower um, on the other setup using Arta. If we just look at the THD, that's a little bit lower, set up the 1K look. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, 0.03, which is where we were with Arta, but we were already looking at 1K with Arta. Here we get to see across the whole uh, the whole frequency range up to our basically our 20K. And, uh, we got a 0 0.03 up there. So okay, that's fair enough. Uh, really, what we're looking for here anyway. We, hey, let's have a little look at the scope because we haven't done that. Um, we do on the square wave channel one. Uh, we'll take a quick peek at a thousand hertz, just do a single hit. And there we go, look. This we could see uh, the slight rise with the frequency response in Arta. And we can see that had a slight rise there, and that's what we can see there. Uh, now we're going to just go down, I'm going to straight to 100 actually, just on this. 100 hertz, single hit. And we can see there's a slight you know, and drop off with the um, with the bass. Uh, let's go to 20 hertz. Hit that. Probably it's not uh, it's not throwing too much uh, away. We already know that it's not terribly bad. Uh, we look at it, but it would be nicer if that did look more square. Uh, let's go to. Uh, 5k oh look at this down there look so I've not actually seen that before again we've got to accept that we're going to get some noise from this um, this setup I mean it's we're using an attenuator, and that's, uh, that's not really a good thing to be doing anyway. But we didn't really come on here for this, but it was just a case of just taking a peek at it anyway. Uh, just for the kicks, let's go to 25 kilohertz. 
one, and that's not too bad really. We're still keeping a square wave as such. Um, it's not the best one, but it's uh, it's not terribly bad. But that's not what we came here for. What we actually came here for uh, was just to look at the total harmonic distortion uh, versus the power. All right, so channel one, make sure we get this right. So range from one watt to 100 watts, eight ohm impedance, 50 steps will do, we don't need that much resolution. And um, well, let's see if we can fit the power supplies on in the corner somewhere. Let me just adjust that. Uh, let's hit run. Let me just stop that actually. I see there's a, I've not put in here. And it wouldn't really affect the others, but we need a uh, external attenuation factor for this to work correctly, put that in the right place. Otherwise we'll get into distortion showing up here before it actually happens. So let's just uh, hit that again. Okay. So we can see here as we hit that um, 1%, we've got 67 watts out of it and if we stay 0.6 let's, let's stay uh, 0.1 is where we're gonna so we get about 63 watts with that uh, 36 volts 36 volts input and that's just on one channel so you remember you'd have that on both channels uh, so that's still quite a quite a bit of music power and even though again, you know, it's THD and noise, we're going to take into account that, that noise floor. Uh, it doesn't seem to be too bad, but as we can see at the lower, like 3.5 watts, um, we got 0.2% distortion. And at 1.5 watts, we got 0.1%. That's not bad, but as soon as we start turning up in power a bit, we've got 6.3, 0.1%, 0, 0, 0.09. 0 0.07, 0 0.08, so all below uh, 0.1, which is quite nice. And there, so yeah, so you can get that out of it. And if we're looking at the 1% crossover at 1% there, 67.2 watts. Not too bad, not too, not too shabby at all. All right, that's it. That's that amplifier. Um, I can't remember what it is. TDA 7294 chipped. This amplifier for the board without the chips, uh, left and right channel uh, chips themselves, it's about 13, 14 bucks, 11 pounds something from AliExpress. And remember, if you use, um, oh sorry, if you use um, complete savings, you can get 10% back off that. All right, guys, uh, that's it. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Thank you very much for watching if you got this far. Bye for now.